thank you for reaching out and asking to chat about what's going on in Israel and Palestine and have a conversation because a lot of times we don't have those conversations and we're always stuck from in one perspective. So this is a great opportunity. Is there a goal you have in mind so that we can make sure that's addressed in this conversation? My main overarching goal, I think, is for Israelis and Palestinians to start to see each other as humans. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> like, really, really, like, it's easy to hate people from far away, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so yeah. we've got to move in yeah. and see, oh, hey, it's another human. And like, especially you and me, we have so much in common. Yes, fellow Southeast Asian Yeah. <laughs> same career path and trying to build online businesses. Yeah. In, you know, with, I mean, I know my overarching goal with teaching self-defense is to reduce violence. And yeah. I have a feeling that it's yours too, right? Yeah, exactly. And so honestly, like it was scary for me to reach out to you. Yeah. But I sometimes tell when, and this is totally just intuition, right? I don't know. But I can sometimes tell when a person might be open to hearing a more nuanced view. When someone has a more open heart, when someone has a more open mind, it's just an intuitive yeah. thing. And so I went on my gut. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, kind of on, along the same lines, I have picked two goals with this conversation, and I've actually had it in my mind. I was talking to my husband about it and stuff. One is to just foster understanding. People just don't have these conversations, and even within my family, you know, I know picking different topics, right? Like there's Republicans versus Democrats, and people don't communicate; they just fight, and there's a screaming match. Like, can't we just sit down and talk, right? So this is this is a different topic, but still great. So just that foster understanding and kind of you know if we do end up sharing this with other people, they can that that can be an inspiration to say okay we have a different disagreement, but we can still have a conversation, right? right. And the second goal is to really talk about hate crimes and what we can do about that, if that is something that you would like to talk about as well. So th those are my goals. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to start? Do you want to just start with sharing something that's on your mind? I know what I see going around the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I'm curious about you as an individual. So I'm curious what you believe. Yeah, so quite a few different things actually. And I'll start with my beliefs about history, which is a strange thing to say because history is a fact, not a belief. Gosh, 1900s, right? Long time, long time ago, the conflict's been going on. And really, what's been happening is that there has been a hatred for Jews and Jewish people. You know, this is before Israel even existed. And many, many years ago, hundreds of years ago, people started to... Well, okay, so the region that is in conflict was really actually controlled by the Ottoman Empire and you know things changed when the Ottoman Empire was no longer the British controlled it, the British made it Palestine and the Jewish people started settling into it and that was the start of Zionism just to establish a land, a safe space, a safe place for the Jewish people to live in so they're not persecuted and that didn't happen. A couple of years later they were still persecuted, the Holocaust happened and uh, you know, many more year la years later, the UN said, "Okay, you know what? We're going to create this piece of. We're going to create, you know, three sections. Right? There's going to be Palestine, there's going to be Israel, and then there's going to be the international zone, I guess, of Jerusalem, because there's a significance on both faiths. The Muslims and the Jewish have, a, you know, they consider it as a religious territory." And then things were great, and that should have been the end of that, except the Arabs intervened. And, I, you know, I guess it was a hatred for the Jews again. So they said, no, I, we don't agree with this, we want this land back. And uh, that was very, very bad move on their part. That's an understatement. Mm -hmm. So they really became the aggressors. They said, no, we're going to take back this land, uh, which was, you know, the UN assigned it. There is no international logical reason to do that. And again, I'm sure people listening or whoever, like, you know, if I say this to someone, they'll say, no, by the way, okay, that's fine. That's just my perspective, right? One, what I read. 
So what happened then was the Israelis fought back and they said, no, absolutely not. We were willing to live in peace with this split territory. And you started taking back from us what is our right that was established by UN. And that's when the big war started and it's been going back and forth. So from the Israeli perspective, right, they said, no, we're going to take back control. And when they fought back, they took back more of the land that was assigned to them. And it kind of makes sense logically, right? You know, if there's two people that say, okay, you know what, we disagree, let's live in peace. And then the other party, right, breaks that rule, breaks that, violates it. This person is not going to go back to the origin and say, okay, let's go back to how we started. No, you've pissed me off. I'm going to like fight back more than before because I've stayed quiet. Nobody's helped me. I've been alone in the world for too long, right? So the unfortunate thing that happened is that the Palestinians who weren't a part of Holocaust or who weren't a part of anti-Semitism or any of that, they got caught in this uh, war. And so there's a, been a lot of back and forth because now Israel said, we want to take more of the land. And Palestinians said, no, this is our land. And uh, wars have just been happening really ever since. And as the years have progressed, of course, the history is still what it is. As of today, it's different now, right? The origins are still true. The fact that the Jews were prosecuted is true. Nobody's going to change that. The fact that nobody supported them uh, you know, and uh, that is also true. And at the same time, at this moment today, it, things have changed in the sense that the Israeli state does now have power and they, they, they did become a developed country. So they also have the ability to influence and impact what's happening. Current, the current situation, quite different from the history, is just there is a power struggle. And the side that's taking the brunt of this are the Palestinians. And from what I understand, there's a lot of Israelis who just want peace. There's a lot of Palestinians who want peace. There's a lot of people who say, end this, you know, from both sides. We just want this to end. Can't we just go back to the two state solution? You know, it seems like there are people on both sides, even if they're a minority, there are still people on both sides who say, no, absolutely not. We want it all. And these are the people who have the power, right? They have the political power, the money power, whatever. They have the influence and the power to make this go on, even though majority of the people, the citizens, don't really want this. And that's what's really happening. So that's my overarching view of everything I believe in. I am so surprised because <laughs> I uh, believe that nearly everything you said is factual and I think until here we agree on probably 98% of things. Cool. I was not expecting that at all, honestly. So that's a great, that's great start. I think it's really important to not brush aside the people on both sides who are calling for peace. I think that the Palestinians are so sick of their situation um, and while Israelis do have more power than the Palestinians in this region um, you know we can't brush off the suffering that the Israelis have endured also because when I first came here in 2001 I would walk into a pizza store and not know if the next here in Israel, okay. if the next person walking in the door was going to blow the whole place to smithereens, right? I mean, Israelis were getting coffee, riding a bus to work, getting pizza, and um, not knowing when the next bomb was gonna go off and kill them and everyone around them. And so Israelis have been living very much in fear for a long time. Um, it's still going on. We are thwarting terrorist attacks every single day. Unfortunately, you know, I don't, I wish we did not need an army, I really do. I don't like guns. I don't like violence. I don't like war. And at the same time, we're thwarting terrorist attacks every day. And so it's like, what do you, what do I even do with that? Like, I don't like it, you know? In the last Intifada, you know, we would go to the grocery store and not know whether we're gonna come home because 
it's not like an army fighting an army. It's an army and then all of these Palestinian citizens, like not, not armed people. And like there's really good, gentle, peace-loving Palestinian Arabs. And then there are the ones who do carry out terrorist attacks and we just never know. Like we see an Arab on the street and we don't know which one he is. And I used to, and I'll fully admit, I used to wrongly assume, like, that, like if you're an Arab, you hate me, you want me to die, and if you could, like, you would kill me, right? And since actually sitting down like we're doing now and speaking to some people, I realized that that's kind of the way that they feel about us. And so I was like, hmm, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, right? Like something is off in what we've all been believing each other. It's kind of all this big lie that we all need to hate each other and need to try to kill each other all the time. Like maybe it doesn't have to be that way. The situation for the Palestinians is really not good. Not good at all. Um, and I really do feel for the citizens. I think, especially with Gaza, the blame is placed on Israel when Hamas, which is a terrorist organization, took control of Gaza and since then it's kind of been kind of been like a bad violent place. I mean, when the Jews were there, you know, we had greenhouses and we had an agricultural economy there and it was you know, we we weren't like best friends, right? But mm -hmm. kind of like how, you know, there's Bethlehem and then there's Jerusalem and then there's Israeli settlements. Like we fight, but we're all kind of coexisting. And then when we left, Hamas just took control of the whole thing. And they have been launching rockets and targeting Israeli citizens. And they place these lo rocket launchers in densely populated areas, sometimes even kindergartens, sometimes even hospitals, knowing that the Israelis are targeting the missile launchers. And so the Israeli, the Palestinians are caught up in this horrible mess and, and they're helpless. Like, I really do feel for them. I just don't put the blame on Israel even though I don't like that we bomb Gaza because I don't want anyone to get hurt. I don't want anybody to die. And I believe that we could, we're smart and we're capable and we could probably figure out a better way. I hold my people to a very high standard, higher than we are. I believe we're smarter than that. We could figure out a way for there to be way less, hopefully zero civilian civilian casualties. Um, but I'm not in charge of the country, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, but... Um, what, do you, what is, in your eye, what is the ideal solution? You know, I'm not a politician. I don't have a solution. I'm yeah, you a have the right to vote, so it comes back to the people, right? So if, if the Israeli citizens all vote and, you know, majority say we want this, then you can see hope in that future. So that's why I ask, right? If you if this was put for a vote, what, what would that look like? So this may sound naive to you, but I don't vote because my leaders don't represent me. The, the Israeli government is a mess. Like, we don't have a government now. We've, we're having elections every couple of weeks because we can't figure out our stuff and get along. And so I voted in the first election. I voted, and maybe, I don't even remember if I voted in the second. Then I was like, I'm done. Like, I'm not playing this game anymore. And I see that none of the leaders really represent me, that my Palestinian friends say their leaders don't represent them. And so I've kind of lost confidence in, in the political leaders and I really think that um, the people, the little people, the masses have way more power than we like to believe and if we all decide 
to stop hating each other, this would all just melt away. Right? Right. Like, so territory somebody, wise, because, mm -hmm. somebody is benefiting off this conflict. Clearly. Clearly. Because what if, you, if the Palestinians are sick of it and Israeli citizens are sick of it, why are we still fighting? Yeah, so who is benefiting according to your perspective? I don't know. Is it, so Hamas? Would you is it America? Is it Iran? Is it Russia? I don't really know. I don't really know, but I'm catching on. Like, it smells. It smells. Yeah. Like, it, it's ridiculous. This conflict has become ridiculous. It's like, we ceased fired and it's kind of like, okay, we'll see each other again next summer, right? We know yeah, what's going to happen. There's always somebody who benefits in the war. That's what was World War II. And I, in fact, I just watched a documentary about how after the war had ended, because they had to do something with, uh, you know, raw materials that were creating weapons, they started using that in farming because you don't want the rich people to get poor. And right, so it's always a rich who benefits. So I get that. I still want to know, because everybody has that in mind, right? So from my perspective, the real solution is this, right? Go back to the original proposal of the UN. You know, there is Israel, there's Palestine, and there is the shared Jerusalem, and that's what we need to go to because otherwise we're not going to move forward, right? So that's that's in that's in my head. But what's in yours? You know, if if the Palestinians create a state um, in the West Bank, then they're not going to let Jews live there as of right now as of right now and so jews would have to be ethnically cleansed from the area and there would be thousands and thousands of displaced people from their homes i know i sound crazy to a lot of people but i think if we were to have real peace we would be able to live side by side right. maybe it's you know i i want palestinians to be able to have uh, sovereignty over their own state. And at the same time, I don't want to have these thousands and thousands of people displaced from their homes. That's not, that doesn't sound like real peace to me. So you do believe that if it was just all one state and everybody, the Palestinians and Israel's, Israelis or Jewish people, they all lived together in one state, that would be the ideal solution. That's what you believe? Yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay. And then kind of taking a very small slice of the pie in light of recent events, because that's what prompted this conversation. I posted about it yeah. very, very passionately. What is your perspective? What's your opinion? And then I can share mine. So the reason I reached out to you is because um, if I remember from your post, there was a claim made that Israel is enacting a genocide in Gaza. I don't know, Fazia, have you ever had a rumor started about you? Yes. How easy was it for the people who didn't really know you? Like your close friends, like they probably didn't believe it, right? Mm -hmm. But the people who weren't so close to you, how easy was it for them to be like, oh yeah, sure, I'll believe that. So what what is the rumor? Like what is the fact that you want to share with me that actually happened? The... If you look at the numbers, the demographics, the population of Arab Muslim people in Gaza and the West Bank is rising every year. There's no genocide. That's a lie. It's a, it's a nasty rumor. And these nasty rumors that have gone around the internet have been instigators for tens and tens of horrific attacks on Jews in the streets in America. Yeah. yeah I definitely want to talk about the hate crime aspect. I think I want to spend a decent time doing that. <clears throat> so I, I do want to wrap up this conversation in a, in five or 10 minutes if we can. But I keep keeping that conversation to itself, the hate crimes, which is an issue. What do you think ha actually happened, right? With Ramadan, with Al-Aqsa mosque bombing and right. So again, I'm not going to share what I've heard and what I've seen. I want to first give you the opportunity to share that and then I'll, I'll, I'll say. I'll sure. Share. I mean, Hamas obviously had all these rockets ready to go, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so I don't know whether this whole thing was planned, but I, you know what? I, I, I want to know if it's okay with you 
we spend a little less time talking about who started what and what with this yeah. war. Uh -huh. And a little more about the impact that people sharing images like the one you shared along with falsehood and an image like that, it does something to the human brain, right? It fires off this amygdala of emotion. And it's very hard for humans to get an image, whether it's true or not. Whether they even know, even if you find out it's a lie, that image is still gonna be in their brain. And so what's very, very scary for Jews right now is those of us who understand, because everyone asks, right? How could the Holocaust have happened? How could people have just let that, those horrific things happen? And we all kind of say like, you know, maybe if I was there, I would have stood up. I would have said something, right? Mm -hmm. Jews right now are seeing exactly how it was allowed to happen. Propaganda with a very strong imagery that triggers lots of emotions, along with nasty rumors about a whole group of people that dehumanize a group of people that people who already hate Jews kind of just take as justification to use violence against us. And so I'm not blaming you, Fazia. I'm not even telling you what to post and what not to post. You are a free woman. You can do whatever you want. So I'm going to turn off my alarm. But I just want you to know the impact. My other phone. Sorry. I want you to know the impact of sharing those types of things. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I'll share my perspective. Thank you for sharing that. <clears throat> and so that's true that th th those are separate things, right, in my mind, which is the hate crime against Jews versus what the Israeli government is doing. I know a lot of people don't see it that way. I know a lot of people say, oh, if you're anti-Zionist, you're anti-Semitist. There's a lot of discussion around that. So just from my perspective, though, right, Everything you said, if you if you just replace the word Israeli with Palestinian, it all stands true. All right, somebody from a Middle Eastern perspective, Palestinian, Muslim, whatever perspective comes to this and says the exact same thing. It's the Palestinians who are being viewed poorly. It's because of Hamas. People are, you know, there's Islamophobia because of terrorist organizations. The, the exact same narrative. Uh, you know, you're talking about Israelis can't go to a coffee shop. They can't ride the bus. They can't go to work in school. You know, Palestinians don't even have a school. They are impoverished. They don't even have food. They can't go about their day. And a lot of imagery that is also around it are military people burning tires, forcing people to leave their homes. So they leave their home for the day and they don't even know if there's a home to come back to. Right. And at the end of the day, it's who has the power. Yes, Hamas has the rockets, but guess what? They're like throwing rocks. On the other side, this huge military power, they have automatic defense system. It's obviously not gonna go through. And so it's about the military versus the people, right? So the conversation is really, there is a country with a military that's oppressing people. It's not now government versus government anymore. It's really government and military versus people. And it's people who don't really have anything. They have rocks and sticks and knives and yeah, sure, a few outdated rockets, but this is a rebellion, right? A resurrection, which is what Intifada is. So it's just trying to talk and say, hey, you're oppressing us. And majority of the people who are dying are the Palestinians. And in fact, that conversation around media skewage is happening on both ends, right? Like you said, there's a lot of rumors around how it's the Israeli government that are the perpetrators. And there's also, you know, from this other side of the perspective, mass media is really usually in favor of the Israelis. That's how the, there's another perspective on that. Most of the media will talk about, oh, look at the, a number of Israelis dying, where in reality, 10 times more Palestinians are dead. And then, is it, you know, and the Israeli side, well, the citizens are in, in fear, but the people dying are the military. But on the other side, it's the women and children dying. But I understand that there is a narrative on the other side as well, right? The Israeli citizens think, well, that's because you're putting your children and women forward. We're putting our military forward. So it's the two people clashing. 
So I get that there is this narrative. And I also really think, though, that the Israeli citizens have the power or the Israeli military really has more power than the Palestinians. So, you know, going into a mosque and, you know, or burning tires and really evicting people from their homes and all of that is a horrible act just looking at that slice of the pie beyond you know without looking at the full historical picture so that's why i was really passionate about it. and i think the picture i shared was uh from the instagram account jewish voice for peace there was a person holding a banner that said stop the genocide i think that was the image and so i shared a couple different banners from protests and stuff like that and uh so so yes there are a lot of people who think it's a genocide because there are more palestinians dying and there are just they're just people and yeah okay there's a ter- terrorist organization but this is military that's being funded by the u.s government and a lot of our taxpayer money is going there to fund them so there is a lot of anger because we don't want this power play israeli military is getting more powerful they're taking more land and what is the point can't we just have two states can't we have equal land right why are they taking more land and evicting more palestinians from their homes and killing women and children do you see that perspective i see some some of what you're saying listen i don't want women and children to die yeah. i don't, don't i don't i agree that the israeli military has more power i don't agree that what's happening there is a genocide genocide means that you're trying to kill off an entire people okay that's not what we're trying to do let me let me give you this your self defense instructor right so if someone was coming at you with a big rock trying to kill you just god forbid smash your head in and you were holding a gun would you use it actually i think the situation is different right if there was a big guy who is trying to to hit me and this is one on one again right if there's some sense of equality here or if he was more stronger than i am that's different but if it's a child on the street who thinks oh i'm a horrible person throws a rock at me you know what no i'm not going to use my gun because that child has no power that's the important distinction to be made here Okay, but on the ground here in and Israel, it's, kill, it's right? not the children the throwing it's not children throwing pebbles. It's not. It's big rocks at heads. There's like this image that there're these little kids like throwing pebbles. That's not what it is. Bricks, sometimes refrigerators. Really sometimes refrigerators, furniture, and listen uh yeah you and i both know if israel wanted to enact a genocide on gaza and take over all the land we could yeah we true. could carpet bomb gaza take it back rebuild our agricultural economy there we don't want to do that so we're targeting the lock rocket launchers that unfortunately are being placed in very populated areas. I think we could do a better job of not killing people. I think we could and I don't like it. I not for war at all. But I'm letting you know what the actual situation is. People love to cheer on the underdog and the Palestinians are the underdog. But Hamas is horrible for everybody for everybody they're la- launching they're launching rockets at israeli citizens they know what israel's going to do that's the same thing again right so there's the resurrection there are people who are desperately trying to hold on to whatever they have i mean the fact that they're throwing refrigerators really says how poor their plight is and the other side you have military that's fully geared that bulletproof ammunition they have a lot of strong weaponry automatic machine gun that's completely different and you know yes no, nobody on the palestinian side terrorist organizations whoever should be doing this but it's again right it's the you're taking over our land we're trying to fight back so the question is why is israel trying to take over so much land and not really sticking to the original un resolution and keeping those lands 
and ending the war, right? Either than Sheikh Jarrah, like what land are we trying to? You're talking about settlement expansion. You're talking about Gaza. I'm talking about Gaza, right? Israel has over okay. time taken over more and more land, and so what's the so purpose let's, behind let's that? And about, why are more Palestinians being? Because settlement expansion is something completely different. Why? Because there are no more Israeli settlements in Gaza. We unilaterally evicted, ethnically cleansed our whole people out of Gaza. There's not one Jew there anymore. Okay. We said, we want peace. You want a state. Let's see what happens when we dismantle every single Jewish Israeli settlement in this little strip and give you your own land. That's what we did in 2005. And then what Hamas, happened? Hamas, mm -hmm. they held elections and Hamas ran for the elections and Hamas won the elections and Hamas is oppressing the Palestinians in Gaza. It's bad news for Palestinians in Gaza. And bad from your news. perspective, what is the Israeli military trying to do about that situation? We're trying to fight Hamas. <laughs> if we could kind of wake up and realize, oh, we have a common enemy and we could work together, we could destroy, we could end this conflict. But instead, there's this narrative that because Israel has more power, we're the bad guys. We do have more power. And in the movies, usually, like Star Wars, right? More <laughs> the dark power side, comes more responsibility. It's not, yeah. right. it's not like that. And I, I again, I'm going to state this again. I think we could do a better job. I don't want civilians to die. We could use our power to empower the Palestinians better. We could do a way better job of that. I don't like the way the Israeli army treats Palestinians. I think we can do better. I really do. And at the same time, they're launching rockets at our towns. But those rockets aren't reaching your town. There's a difference, right? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And people died. Yeah, people are dying on both sides. Yes, they are. They're dying on both sides. Yeah. It's very unfortunate. Yeah, it is. And what is something that you hope to see from me or from people who support Palestinians in general? I think just before you share images about the Israeli army or Jews or Israel really fact check and when you promote one side and not the other side like you show all the things that are happening to pa Palestinians and you don't show that Israelis are schlepping their babies out of bed in the middle of the night to run to these gross bomb shelters some you know, Buildings don't even have bomb shelters. They're huddled up with all their neighbors in the stairwell in their underwear, right? If they were in the shower, they're naked, like in the middle of the night because their sirens going off and bombs are dropping and Israelis are basically sleeping in these bomb shelters because sirens just all night. And there's, there's fear. There's fear for our lives. There's fear for our children. I don't want this future for my children. Yeah. And I don't want that future for the Palestinian children. And so when you show one side and you don't show the other, it just divides us even more. It, it allows us to dehumanize each other even more. And it's what allows, it's what fuels this conflict more and more. When we just stated in the beginning of this, what we both want is for this conflict to end. Like we're so done, right? We're yeah. so done. Right? Yeah, and you know, I'll admit the challenge is if I did share both those aspects, I think it would make things worse because I have seen those, right? Where they say, you know, on the Israel side, people are running and hiding in bomb shelters in the middle of the night. They're taking their babies. On the Palestinian side, babies died. They were bombed. People's homes were just bombed. 
So if you show that side by side, there is no comparison. Who do you think people are going to take sympathy with, right? Obviously, the people who are literally died and who are evicted from their homes, they don't even have a home to go to or a bomb shelter to go to. So that's the right, challenge. But, and yeah, go ahead. But is this a competition about who is suffering more? No. Or yes. Is this? Yeah. Or is this? Hey, we all want to live in safety and peace. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So the and the, so and so I'm not saying that the Palestinians aren't suffering. I don't like that babies died. That's horrible, horrible, right? But I could talk about all the Israeli babies that died at the hands of Palestinians. Yeah. I could, if you want me to go into it. Yeah, and you know, from what I see in the mass media in America, that is being covered, right? So it's about sharing the perspective that's not usually shared. And I think over time, there has been a little bit more awareness. I remember 10 years ago, it was all about Look at how Israel is suffering, and that's all you would ever see in the news. Now there's a little bit more awareness, and so there's a little bit more balance because more people are showing pictures of Palestinian suffering also. It's not just the Israel. And I do think that the political side is separate from the human side of things. You know, I don't think the Israeli citizens or the Jewish people or the Palestinian people want this, right? And I, I, I don't think there is that direct hate that oh, if I'm a Palestinian citizen, I'll see a Jewish person, I hate that person inherently. I don't think that's the case either. Uh, regardless of what side they support, I think the problem really, which drove me to post this is, and that's what a lot of people feel too, is that there is a lot of funding going into this war. And why are my tax dollars right going to fund this war? Right? Why are weaponry being purchased? And then again, somebody's benefiting. Or these people are creating weapons, they're these rich people, they want to keep making money, they want to make sure the war goes on. Right, so the fight is stop funding the people. Right, stop sending money to Israel. I mean, there's a lot of videos about you know Kamala Harris and other others too. You know, they they go to an APAC conference and say, oh, Israel's our friend. We're going to give them one billion dollars in weaponry money. That's going to cause a lot of anger and rage. So it's not about people, and that's why I want to now take this conversation to what we can do to make sure that this hate doesn't happen. Right, at least um, uh, when it comes to Jewish and Israeli citizens. But from my perspective, that. And I could be wrong, but from my perspective, it's separate. The politics, the government, Hamas and Israeli military, those people are separate from the citizens. And the anger is U.S. money going to fund this war. And that needs to stop. And yes, and just like you said, right, the military killing people, that needs to stop as well. And then this terrorist organization and all of that, right? So, but at the same time, how can we make sure that people don't suffer? Hate crimes are horrible. Jewish people living in America or anywhere in the world should never be in fear, right? Just like any Muslim person walking down the street or a Jewish person or a black person walking down the street should never face this. So do you feel comfortable taking the conversation to hate crimes or is there something more you want to share on this topic to wrap it up on the, the political conflict? Um, just that I agree that like, if Americans don't want their tax dollars going to Israel. They have every right to call their representatives and say, we don't want this, right? Like yeah. America's its own country, its citizens are its own people. And if you don't want your tax dollars going there, by all means, you, you can call. Yeah. But what you need to know is that a lot of that funding goes to the Iron Dome, which saved a lot of lives. And I, wish that Israel could have a military on our own budget. Like we should not be like taking money from America. We should be independent. We should be weaning off ourselves off of them, right? Like why are they even involved? I agree with that. But right now our defense system comes from there. And while Israelis, the Israeli military does have much more power than the Palestinian people, it's a teeny tiny sliver of a Jewish country surrounded by giant Muslim countries that have attacked it a whole bunch throughout history. Yeah. So our military is very important to us because of that. Yeah. Um, and because of terror attacks. And so we need soldiers on the streets and at checkpoints. I wish we did. I don't like the checkpoints. I don't like what happens to Palestinians at checkpoints, but the way Israelis feel is that if we don't check every Palestinian, we could be letting in a whole bunch carrying knives 
waiting to knife the next person in the street. That's just the yeah, reality of where we're at right now. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the other point of frustration too. It's Palestinians on Palestinian land that can't get to their homes because it's an Israeli checkpoint. And that fuels more frustration as to why is that happening? So, and, and yeah, you know, it's not, it's not good. Not good for yeah, Palestinians. And, and kind of going back to what I was sharing, you know, on uh, Instagram, I also shared several banners uh, that, uh, you know, Jewish Voice for Peace posted about how Jew, Jews for peace and Jews for, you know, um, um, Jews and support, etc. Like, you know, things like that. Do you think that's still a skewed perspective if I share, you know, support Palestine, stop sending us money, you know, Palestinians are dying, you know, and they're Jewish people who are pro-peace. Is that not balanced? Are you talking about the pictures of the men with payas and hats holding up support Palestine posters and stuff like that? That's a different group, right? That's not to record the right. I think that's what they're called. Yeah. Right. So that's I was talking about just, that. yeah, so they, I guess that that is part of that. I, I don't think I've shared that those pictures, but just people in general. They just say, I'm a Jew and I want peace. And yeah, there are people who say, I'm, I'm a Jew and I'm for Palestine or whatever. And, you know, I'm a Jew and I don't want, you know, I, I think I even shared something like um, somebody had a poster that said, I'm a Jew and my mother didn't survive Holocaust to see another war, another war or something like that, right? So, so those kinds of things, do you think it doesn't provide a balance? Or, you know, it does or maybe... It, yeah, share, can you share a little bit about that as well, what, what you think? I'm not really sure. I think uh, you, have a, you have a big audience, you have a lot of power, have intention with what you post, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, because with great power. Israelis and Palestinians, so, yeah. yeah, Israelis and Palestinians are both suffering. We both endured horrors, horrors, because of this conflict. Um, I don't see it as a competition anymore who has more horror, like we've both suffered a ton. We've lost kids in horrific ways. Um, we've lost many lives in horrific ways. We all, most of us want it to end really badly. We have different opinions about how to go about that. You know, the Jews aren't going anywhere. The Palestinians aren't going anywhere. We're gonna have to figure this out like adults. Eventually yeah. we're gonna have to. Yeah, so you want to make sure that anything I post or anybody else does, right, it's, it doesn't promote hate against Jews. That's the important thing. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Or the destruction of Israel. You know, like, we need to be able to exist. We just do. Yeah. We do. Yeah. We need this land. It, yeah. It, I mean, and the more hate crimes that happen in the in the streets of the United States, which has been an amazing safe haven for Jews the last couple of centuries, yeah. the more we see how much we need Israel. That's the only place yeah. in the yeah. world that Jews could go and feel safe with the Jewish police force protecting them. We are very wary of other non-Jewish yeah. police forces because every single country that we've established communities in has persecuted us. Even like Eastern Europe was an incredible place for Jews. There were huge yeshivas and, you know, we flourished there until we didn't, until we didn't. Yeah, yeah. And there's not almost zero Jews in Poland now, zero. So yeah, we need was- Israel. Yeah. We need Israel for a whole bunch of reasons, and that's one of them. So we're going to have to figure this out. But I think that sitting down and talking is like one thing that we can do. Not yeah. in the comment section. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, uh, I, I, I'm going to make my intentions at least very clear. You know, when I post anything, I am still, and I think we're on the same page, I'm still very anti-military doing all of those things they're doing. At the same time, I'm going to make sure that people understand this is very specific to military doing something, a very very specific action in, uh, you know, the Gaza Strip. This has nothing to do about Jews, right? Jews are good people, they're peaceful people. I think it's really important for me to follow that up so that there is that balance so people understand that and uh, kind of making sure that the, the, the funding, the war stays separate from hurting people right so uh, hate crimes are an issue and you're right that you know we don't want to take this like 
because I, I know what you're talking about because that's how islamophobia started right when 9 11 right. happened and you know what it's, it's like, like to be hated for who you are yeah. you know what it's exactly. like it's not fun we don't want that yeah exactly so you know and then it's really hard to walk down the street with a hijab because yeah. you know and i've had that at airports i was detained for hours you know they I threw know. everything out of my bag literally you know the, at this um, ch um you know what is it called like they take you to special security they open my bag they literally dumped it on the floor and i'm thinking what are you doing right this is not humane so i yeah. know i feel that and so that's my responsibility and so I will make sure, because you're right, I have more followers, so I do have more power to influence people, that I'll make sure that I, I'm very clear in my opinion about how this war needs to end, how people, you know, killing people needs to stop, and at the same time, we need to be very intentional about not, um, you know, hate crimes, and I really want to jump into the topic of that. And, sure. Um, and and uh, kind of also wanted to say that, that because I do believe that, right, like that people, you know, with more power becomes more responsible, so I'm gonna make sure that I don't, you know, cause hate crimes. I'm gonna be intentional about it, and you're more than welcome to call me out on that. Anytime I do that, uh, intentionally, unintentionally, right? It, it's gonna be unintentionally because I'm so passionate about the side that's really, really dying. And I get it, right? I get it. I have one perspective that's different from yours. Um, and at the same time, I will also be sharing narratives that, you know. Uh, you know, things like uh, the Israeli people have more power, so, you know, they have more responsibility. And I really hope that they and the citizens can step up and take control of their government. And they have that, the, they, you know, they can get the power to persuade their government to end this. Uh, because I also believe that, you know, pa that Palestinians don't, you know, don't have the power to do anything at this point in time, except just just reacting, throwing, you know, rocks, bridges, whatever. Uh, but, the, but the Israelis have the power to end the war and separate the states and go back to that. So, um, does that sound fair? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. But, and so, but also, yeah, please. Also, this is like really insightful. Maybe what could be part of the problem here is that the Palestinian people are not realizing how powerful they are. Maybe we need to empower. Palestinian people. Yeah. Because Palestinian people, they can make a difference. Yeah. And you have any ideas on what that could look yeah. like? What, what could that look like? How can we empower Palestinians? The more terrorist attacks Palestinians carry out, the more they're locking themselves further and further in their cage because the more the Israelis are going to be fearful. If the Palestinians could decide that we actually, killing Jews is not the answer. We actually have a common enemy. It's the leaders, it's Hamas. Then we could join forces. <laughs> I yeah. feel like I sound like a crazy person, but like, no, no. I'm a visionary. This is just who I am, right? Yeah. We could and, join forces and end this. Yeah. I really do think so. Yeah, yeah. So empower and, your and brothers and sisters. Actually, that's the challenge, right? Yeah, and that's the challenge because this has going, been going on for so long, right? It, it's always, oh, who did what first? It always comes back to that. And I want to stop that conversation because, you know, even in this sliver of an example, Right. If you hear this side of the narrative, it's, well, we bombed them because they first came to the Aqsa Mosque and they actually started pushing people out and they start. And there's like, no, well, we came to the Aqsa Mosque because you started this first. And so that's the problem, right? It's just constantly who started what first. And if we can you get out of that first. narrative and just say, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, you know. So I can, I can, and the reason I'm saying this right now is I know for a fact that if I take this conversation somewhere else or someone else hears it, they'll say, no, but it's the Israelis who did this first, right? And that's why I'm saying that because I know people are going to say that and that's just the conversation, that's what's stopping this because it's constantly who did what first. But honestly, it's just been going on for so long and it, it doesn't matter. The end goal is the violence needs to stop and yes. peace needs to happen and we have ideas and, um, yes. you know. Like, do you uh, want to be right or do you want peace? And which one do you want more? Yes, exactly. Yeah. I want peace. 
Yeah. I really yeah. do. Yes, peace exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Got to leave the history. And I think we just struggle with that as humans in general. Israelis aren't going anywhere. Palestinians aren't going anywhere. What are we going to do now? Yeah. And I really wish the UN actually had more power to step in and do something, right? Because internally it is a tough it is a tough battle because again like I said it's a small percent of the population don't want to give up and um, I really hope we can go to the two state solution Israel has its land and Palestinians have their land and Jerusalem can just really be shared so there's both Muslims and Jews have a significance there right because we have a shared yeah. history Abrahamic faith mm -hmm. so I really do mm -hmm. hope that that happens and and I'm really grateful for the conversation can we talk a little bit about hate crimes do you have time for that yeah sure yes so uh, what, uh, I guess let's talk about, you know, uh, Jews in America. What are, what are some Jews facing? What are some of the issues and challenges they're facing? Start with that and then we can go to what we can do about it. So the most common thing that has been coming out, the stories that have been coming out, um, are Jews in the street or at a diner or, you know, just out in public mm -hmm. and a group of people will come up to them and say, are you Jewish? And what's the intention behind that question? Right, and, and the intention is, if you are Jewish, I am going to attack you, right? They have knives, they're ready to go, saying like knife in the holster, like pulling it out, are you Jewish? Are you Jewish? Um, or coming into a restaurant saying, who here is Jewish? Who here is Jewish with like a weapon in their hand? Um, and then there have been a bunch of incidents, you know, where rocks have been thrown in windows and synagogues have been vandalized with horrible things. And, um, and you know, visibly Jewish people are just getting beat up because no one needs to ask if they're Jewish. And so they just get really bad. And you're right, you're right, because this did happen here um, in the greater Seattle area where uh, la not last year, maybe two years ago, time is kind of weird these days, there was a synagogue in Mercer Island that was vandalized. And yeah, and I, I, I yeah. And, and there's, there's been other incidents as well in the greater Seattle area. And and that and that's again it, right? So if a Muslim and a Jewish person watches this or you know hears this conversation, we're it's really we need to be on the same page because we're suffering the same things, right? And in Redmond, yeah. which is just a 15-minute drive from the synagogue, there was a mosque or there is a mosque which was also vandalized, right? They also right. threw stones yeah. and broke it. So it's like we were both suffering the same thing. So yeah, right. I mean, but this is this is about you. So I'll, I'll come back. I, I was just bringing that point so that we can all say, yeah, we're no, suffering. It's, we're it's, we're it's, together suffering. It's okay to bring that stuff up. I'm it's really important. sorry to hear, by the way, that's that's really scary when someone comes up to anybody with a knife. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. people can relate. So uh, that's 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 horrible, and I'm really sorry to hear that, and I can relate, right? So what do you think we can do as citizens um, of the U.S., right? Uh, people, what can we do who are not Jewish to help with that, so that people who are Jewish or Israeli don't suffer these hate crimes? Denounce it publicly. Right. Denounce violence. Denounce anti-Semitism. There are some people, there's some Jewish people who think that if we say, or, or the non-Jewish people say that we're anti-Semitism and also anti-Zionism, that's a problem, right? Can you share a little bit about that? Does that actually cause issues? I mean, I don't think they're talking about the original Zionist movement, which was pure and clean. I think what they mean when they say that, right, is that the government trying to take whatever take over so i i want to ask that to you specifically because i've heard some jewish people say don't do the whole i'm anti-semitic and anti-zionist because that causes problems so i want to ask your opinion on that zionism like you said it was this desire to establish sovereignty in israel palestine mm -hmm. today what it means to jews is our right to continue to live here and be sovereign. It doesn't mean trying to take over land. It doesn't mean hurting anyone. It means 
Israel has a right to exist. And a lot of the <clears throat> charters of organizations like Hamas, Islamic Jihad, even the Palestinian Authority do not recognize Israel's right to exist. So when you say anti-Zionist, given the history of the Jewish people, it's a pretty anti-Semitic thing to say. And it's almost mm. scarier to Jews than these guys whipping out knives because it's kind of wrapped up in this PC package that's mm. very um, easy to go along with that movement, right? Like, right, in the right. last couple of weeks, anti-Sem, like people are just blatantly anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic, and not worrying about the consequences. But leading up to that was a lot of anti-Zionism mm -hmm. that people were very easily able to go along with because it's positioned that way as justice. It's positioned as justice. Do you see how the human brain works? Yeah, like, yeah, I get it because when they're saying anti-Zionist, they're what they're trying to say is that we're anti-Israel taking over more land and killing people. But actually, what they what it originally means is their right to have land, and the word has been corrupted. So the better right. thing to say is we're anti-war or anti, yeah. you know, right, other things. And and you're welcome to criticize the Israeli government as much as you want to. Just don't call for the destruction of my country, please. Because wow. clearly, I have no other safe place to go, even with rockets falling on my house. I would still, I would still feel safer here than in the streets of New York right now. So there are two big takeaways, which is one, we need to bring more awareness to like, don't use anti-Zionism. That's a slippery slope to something else. And right. uh, just denouncing hate crimes when they come up sharing and saying, this is not okay. Please, that would be so helpful. Jews feel very alone right now. Yeah, and I, I have to, I, I don't know how much it means coming from me, but I, I do have to say that at least at minimum, given the history, that's, it's horrifying because who has supported the Jews? The Arabs got together and started the war, right? And so, yes, you know, not to try to anger either side, you know, that's the true history. And even though today, maybe more Palestinian, Today, more Palestinians are dying and they have less power. Yeah, Originally, true. though, it was different, right? The Arab, four or five Arab countries got together. And so it's really important to, I think for everybody, right, to understand, regardless of how passionately we feel about what's going on, is that the history is just that the Jews have been alone. There have been lots of people gathered against them. So it's really important to end the hate. That's really, really important. And even from the Islamic perspective, right, you know, because I do want to share this recording with all, you know, my people as well. And it's, it's really important that we understand from even a Muslim perspective, like our prophet, I mean, we consider Moses our prophet, right? Because we have an Abrahamic history. So we, right. Moses is our prophet, Jesus is our right. prophet, Muhammad is our prophet. So when I say prophets, right. I'm including everybody, they would sure. denounce this. But even if I leave Moses or Jesus aside, if I just look at Prophet Muhammad, right, he would absolutely denounce hatred for any reason, any cause, and there's his, you know, historical evidence. So it's really important we don't hate people or become the aggressors just because we think their government is, right? This is not. So those are two big things. Right. Anything third or anything else you want to add that can uh, help Jewish people live in peace in the US? Or anything else you want to share, period? <laughs> um, well, first of all, I want to say publicly that I just denounce Islamophobia. I denounce hate crimes against, against Muslims. Um, whether they're visually, outwardly Muslim the way you are or not. Um, everyone should have a right to be who they are. And when we realize that we actually have more power than we think, we could get together to create a better world together because humans are very powerful creatures, then it's possible. It's possible. I really do believe it's possible. Um, speaking up right now is hard 
because the social justice movement and the Free Palestine movement are kind of wrapped up in each other. And now it's hard to be nuanced, right? It's hard to say, it's hard to be feminist and say that you, you know, like the whole intersectional thing, you, you need to realize that Jews are an intersection too. And so leaving them out of the picture doesn't help anybody. And so it's very courageous to speak up about this topic in a nuanced way. And so if you decide to do that, I really, really salute you. That's all. Can, can, yeah, thank you. Can you elaborate on that, leaving them out of the picture? You know, most of what I saw online was the feminist accounts that I follow. Um, a lot of Palestinian activists in there saying, you know, can't believe you're not talking about Palestine right now. It's shameful. You're not really a feminist. You're not intersectional if you're not talking about this. And it's kind of like this shaming people into talking about a subject that they don't 100% understand. Because as we just clearly saw, it's more nuanced right. than what people yeah. are posting online. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're so right. Like it's very, Yeah. And it's very hard because people see one thing and they assume something. Right. So because I know because I've been following both sides of the accounts just because I was I'm curious. And so I've seen a lot of people posting, you know, the hashtag I stand with Israel. And then a lot of other side of the people saying, how could you be with women and children dying? And that's a problem. Someone saying something and somebody else takes that as a completely different thing. And then, and then that, that argument goes back and forth. And this person says, no, I'm just saying I have the right to, you know, live safely. But that's why I say I stand with Israel. And the other person says, well, then in that case, why aren't you saying you're with peace and denouncing what your military is doing? And so there's this, OK, you know how you know how online comments and arguments go. Yeah, and exactly. is it, <laughs> yeah, is it fair, right, to say that I and other people who stand in this side of the spectrum have the power to then say, hey, you know what, what's happening with the military is horrible. At the same time, please don't hate the Jews, right? Balance. Is it also fair to then ask the Israelis to do the same? Say, you know what, we are anti-war. We don't want Palestinians to die. We don't want women and children to die. At the same time, we want an Israeli state. We just want the right, right? Can yeah. that narrative also, can the power be placed in your hands also so that the narrative people, when they go to Jewish people's accounts, they don't see just, I stand with Israel. What does that even mean? Now, now they're getting right. angry, right? Because they don't right. understand what that means. Yeah. So placing that power on both sides and saying, you know, can both sides do that? And, um, you know, does that sound fair also? Yeah. So that yeah. there's more understanding. So people, when they come to Jewish people's accounts or the other way around, see both. Yeah, and there are some accounts that have been pretty nuanced. Hen Mazig is one of them. Can you please share those with me in the, uh, you know, sure. in the message, in the, uh, direct DM, that's what I was trying to say. Sure, sure. Um, and any other accounts that you want me to follow, because you think they are, you know, for whatever reasons, please share them with me. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Is there anything else you'd like to add or you'd like to ask, or you'd like me to speak about before we kind of go off or end um, this conversation is what I meant. <laughs> yeah, just keep doing your amazing work with reducing violence and teaching women how to do that for themselves and women and men. And it's, it's really, really important. Something I believe very strongly in, I don't know, power to the people. Yeah, <laughs> like, and thank Our leaders are not figuring this out. So maybe yeah. let's, Let's, you know, that's true. Let's step into our power, you know? You're right. We as people have power. And I, wa I really want to say thank you for reaching out to me. I did not know you were Jewish. I did not know you lived in Israel, right? I would just follow you because <laughs> you were a self defense instructor. So I was actually really happy that you reached out. And I wanted to have this conversation. So thank you so much. I think I have thank become you. a better person after this conversation. I've understood my responsibility and what I need to do. So I do appreciate your reaching out. I really appreciate you agreeing to speak with me. This yeah. has been a pleasure. This pleasure has been a meeting pleasure. you. And yeah, and keep doing the great work yourself as well, helping women, empowering people. And I will talk to you next time. Congratulations on gifting yourself this powerful knowledge. 
I challenge you today to share this video with one friend who can gain immense value from it. Check out our free masterclass that will teach you how to be confident on the street, be strong in relationships and successful at work. Links in the description.